Hi everyone, now, who hates a proper action flick with a thriller layer on top, no one right? So here we are today bringing you the latest action thriller flick outed by Netflix this month. Interceptor. Matthew Riley directorial has Elsa Pataki, aka, Mrs. Chris Hemsworth and Luke Bracey in lead. Now for a proper understanding of the movie, here is a little pretext. We all know that we live in a nuclear world, with that came nuclear warheads, and with that came interceptors. Interceptors are missiles specifically designed to intercept and destroy nuclear warheads before it touches land. Once a nuclear warhead is launched, there is a specific margin that it could be taken down by an interceptor, and when that margin is over, there would be no other way to stop the inevitable. And with that in mind, let's jump right into the movie. The movie also starts with a pretext of its own. When a nuclear missile is launched from Russia, it will take 24 minutes to mark strike in American soil. In case of such an event, America has two interceptor bases to defend and defuse the event. One in Alaska named Fort Greeley, and one in the middle of Bering Sea in Arctic Ocean named SBX-1. Once a missile of such sort is launched, these interceptors have 12 minutes to intercept. In between these expositional pretexts, we can see a group of militants taking over the Fort Greeley interceptor base. Now that one out of two interceptor bases got compromised, only SBX-1 stands between America and nuclear holocaust. Now let's dive into the good stuff. Captain J.J. Collins, who got assigned to the SBX-1 reaches the base. While she was being escorted to the colonel's room, we can hear the women who escorts her asking J.J. about her Spanish background. This is something deliberate. Though there was no need to take a dig on her Spanish lineage, the movie does do so to mask Elsa Pataki's Spanish accent while speaking English. This is quiet often too for example, for the same reasons, she played a Latina in the Fast and Furious series also. In Colonel's office, she meets her colonel and another guy named Captain Welsh. We can see that the colonel is genuinely proud to see JJ here. And why is that? We will see shortly. Colonel asks Welsh to give them some privacy, and on his way out, we can also hear Colonel saying to keep an eye on the Russian sub, which keeps on roaming near the base. When the captain leaves the room we can see JJ unloading her frustration on the colonel for assigning her back to SBX-1, but she then finds her calm. Though she was frustrated, she was also thankful to the colonel for taking her back. JJ reaches her room, and when she closes the door, she sees a vulgar picture of her, hanging down from the door. This is when we get hints on what happened to her in past. She was abused by her commander. Still we are kept in dark on what happened after the abuse. As she was sitting there even more frustrated, Colonel knocks on her door and asks her to be at the command center with her sidearm. As they were walking to the command center, Colonel explains the situation to her. And the situation is the same we saw earlier. Fall of Fort Greeley. Now as they walks to the command center, we get an idea of Abu the whole layout of the command center. One must pass through not one, but two doors which are almost 10 feet apart in order to enter the command center. Both doors are opened by a key card. There reaches the command center. There are two more people over there. Rahul and Beaver. Rahul seems to be a nice guy and Beaver, from the get-go, is an a-hole. While Rahul is trying to gather as much info as he can, Beaver just sits back and enjoys his yogurt and tells how he is planning to kick some ass in poker later that night using his laptop which sits next to him. Right then, JJ picks up some radio chatter from Kremlin that 16 nuclear missiles from Tavlinka base in Russia has been stolen by militants. Now the situation begins to pan out. A Russian submarine is roaming near the SBX-1, Fort Greeley went dark and now, 16 nuclear missiles got stolen. Red flags everywhere. A video message from a Russian militant is forwarded to them from Pentagon the very next moment. In that video, the militant confirms what was feared. At this moment, JJ really smelled something was off. She walked up to the colonel as he was leaving. If the militants had people in Tavlinka and Greeley, isn't there a chance that they already infiltrated SBX-1? Right at the moment she shares this concern of her with Colonel, a bullet goes through Colonel's face. The janitors who were working in the SBX-1 were actually part of the militant group. Now that everything else is taken care of, it was their time to move, and the Colonel was the first one to fall. JJ fights back. Somehow, JJ managed to snatch the key card from Colonel's body, and she jumped onto the corridor between the two doors to the command center. But before she could close the door behind her, a militant also managed to enter the corridor. After one good fight, JJ managed kill the militant. Now the stage is all set. 
JJ, along with Rahul and Beaver must defend that command center by any means necessary. During the fight between JJ and Militant, a gun went off quite a few times and one of the bullet knocked Beaver out. But luckily enough, it wasn't a big deal. It knocked him out, but again it wasn't a big deal. JJ closes the second door behind her. At that time the intercom starts buzzing. JJ attends the call. It was leader of militants from other side of the door. Same time, JJ goes to the storage and picks some bulletproof vests for Rahul, Beaver and herself. She puts her on and gave two of them to Rahul. Leader of the militants says his name is Alexander Kessel and he is as American as she is and he is fighting for something important. JJ didn't give a rat's bottom on what he was saying. So, Kessel changed his tone. He started threatening JJ and says he killed everyone else on that base. And he started cutting through the door with blowtorches. Same time, Pentagon calls JJ. JJ informs them about Kessel and his plans. Pentagon promises to send a group of Marines to the SBX-1. But the Ada was about 90 minutes away. Kessel and his team only needed 60 minutes to breach the command center. So, time was the enemy. Somehow JJ and her team must defend the command center for 90 minutes. It was a do or die situation, except the die here is applied to millions of Americans. To make her open the door, Kessel starts bargaining with Captain Welsh's life. But JJ stood strong. Trading Welsh's life for millions of American life was never a bargain for JJ. Seeing that she will not open the door, Kessel kills Welsh. While Beaver stays unconscious, JJ and Rahul brainstorms on other ways Kessel might use to enter the command center. But all the tunnels were too small for a man to fit. But somehow one militant enters the command center. How? There was a vent in the command center that opens down to the ocean. But to enter the command center through that vent, one have to swing through some iron bars. This guy, who is evidently good in martial arts, swung through that rods and entered the command center. But before he could inflict major damage, JJ took him on. But the guy was a lot to handle. Somehow, JJ took a shotgun and blew a hole through the guy and dumped him into the sea. But the gun got damaged. So the odds got skinny for JJ and team. Now, they had to hold Kessel back without even a gun. Kessel tries to mentally break JJ by showing the vulgar photo of hers which we saw earlier. Kessel thought that all the trauma that came with the photo will mentally break her. But JJ was way more than that. She didn't break a sweat. A step further, Kessel started narrating the bitter experiences JJ had to encounter three years back. Three years into the past, a superior officer tried to take advantage on JJ sexually. Even though she put forward a complaint against him, nothing happened. After all that burned down, the same guy tried to molest her again. This time, JJ recorded the hole and released it. Though the officer got discharged from the army, the patriarchal army turned against JJ. Hate messages and death threats came pouring in. Even her apartment got vandalized. Life became too had for JJ and she decided to let go. She tried to commit suicide. If it wasn't for her father who saved her and gave her the will to fight her way out of everything life threw at her, she would have died then and there, but because of him, she fought back and rejoined the army. Kessel finished his narration and asked JJ to join him and fight against the army who gave her a hard time. JJ didn't break. Meanwhile the first door got breached. Kessel's men started working on the final door. He once again asked JJ to give up and the answer was a big fat no. Here the story takes its first turn. While JJ and Rahul were distracted, Beaver, who was unconscious, or rather who acted being unconscious, stood back up, took his gun and shot Rahul and JJ in their bulletproof vest. When they fell down he opened the doors to let Kessel in. Beaver was part of the militant group all along. Kessel tied JJ and Rahul up. He then connected a video feed to all the networks in America and started to speak to the public. The Pentagon was also included. Through the feed, Kessel says that he is a true American and the America he once adored somehow lost its way. He says that he wants to make a new America and for that, the one that exists now must be destroyed. With all of America watching, Kessel launches the first missile to America. Somehow, JJ broke her thumb and managed to slip through the zip tie. Through a flash move, he got her hands on a gun and went haywire. She shot one or two militants down. Somehow to save themselves, Kessel and Beaver ran out of the command center. JJ closed the door behind them, and with all of America watching, she took down the militant left in the room and launched the interceptor. The interceptor missile took down the nuclear missile. Everything got under JJ's control. Kessel was frustrated big time. He took his biggest card out. He threatens to kill JJ's father. 
Still JJ didn't open the door. Kessel kills her father. With no other way to open the doors, Kessel tries to flood the base. Rahul and JJ knew what was coming their way. To buy some time, Rahul decided to manually close the valves Kessel opened. Kessel saw him leaving and sent Beaver after Rahul. Rahul somehow manages to buy some time. But Beaver kills Rahul. This makes JJ the last man standing. Kessel, with his plan to sink the base going on smoothly, decides to leave the base. He calls the Russian sub and passes down his Swiss bank account details in order to pay them for saving him. JJ hears this and notes down that account number. Then she threatens Kessel to cut the live feed to American networks. Kessel knew straight away that she had him. So he cuts the feed. JJ then started covering the glass part of the door with duct tape to blind Kessel. ETA was still 17 minutes away. The base will sink in 15 minutes. As always, the clock was against JJ. So she started plotting a new plan. Only way to secure the interceptor missiles was by making Kessel to stop the sinking. For that, she somehow had to give up the command center to Kessel, and when Kessel stops the sinking process and launches the nuclear missiles, she would jump right back in and kill Kessel, and then launch the interceptors. Pentagon gives her permission to carry out her plan. Beaver, after killing Rahul, somehow managed to enter the command center through the open vent. But JJ wasn't there. Beaver after a quick scan of the room, opened the doors to let Kessel and the remaining militant in. The moment he got the command center back, Kessel stops the sinking process and launches all missiles. Then he damages everything in that room. Meanwhile, Beaver climbs up to the roof, searching for JJ. But she wasn't there. Right when Beaver said that JJ was not up on the roof, Kessel smelled what what coming. He starts to sweep the room with the third militant. JJ, who was hiding found the perfect time to jump out and kill the militant. But before she could kill Kessel, he got away. JJ tries to launch the interceptors, but the circuits were destroyed, meanwhile, time was running out. When one door closes, another opens. JJ sees Beaver's laptop. She took that laptop to the roof and connected it directly to the interceptors. The missiles was ready to be fired. But Beaver jumps back in. Both Beaver and JJ lets the fists to do the talking, and finally JJ gets the better of him. But before she kills him, Beaver manages to pull JJ into the ocean with him clock was ticking. With a will that never runs out of fire, JJ climbs her way back up, and right before the clock runs out, she launches the interceptors. One by one, the interceptors took down each and every one of the nuclear missiles. Kessel sees all this. To get something to smile even in that defeat, Kessel tries to kill JJ. Yet again, JJ came on top. Meanwhile the submarine which was waiting for Kessel pops up. With all their plans gone belly up, the Russians shoots Kessel down. They let JJ go to avoid further conflict with America. JJ was the only man standing on the base. Soon after the Russian sub left, the Navy SEALs reaches the base and extracts JJ. Later, JJ opens her eyes to see the president waiting by her bedside in a hospital. President had a gift for her. It was her father. Turns out, before Kessel's men could kill her father, his friends jumped right in kicked some asses. With a pan-out shot of JJ and her father, the screen goes dark. 